day we wrote history. 3.9 million inhabitants and we're in the final of the World Cup. Luka Modric. There were 14 players out of 23 in our World Cup squad used to play for Dynamo. 22 half million euro. Any 11 and Zoran Mamic, sport director. We came to school and started working, there was a lot. One of the ten of them came to us. They started shooting the grenades, boom, boom, boom. When the first profi was a little closer, everyone was like this under the club. I don't want to talk about the fact that a man would throw his head on his head. It was impossible. I didn't believe that he could do it like Bruce Lee. So this is the second hotel that the Modric family lived in. This is the hotel where he spent last two years of his uh, of him as a refugee. I can I don't speak Croatian, but I can make out the name Beckham. He's not a sheep, but Beckham from Obrovac. Uh, Obrovac is his birthplace. So the Obrovac Beckham. This hotel has been abandoned for several years now, as you can see. Uh, it doesn't and look this good. is the place where where the biggest anti modric graffiti yeah. took place when the mamic mamic story broke out you can't read luka modric anywhere here because it has been deleted or covered over so, so it's it's not a widespread opinion that people of dislike course. modric you will remember this day and that refers to the day he went on court to testify in in mamic's case when they say he committed perjury that's right zdravko mamic is a former executive president of dinamo zagreb in 2015, he was arrested on suspicion of tax evasion and bribery. He was sentenced in the summer of 2018 to six and a half years in prison for fraud relating to the transfer of players, including Dejan Lovren and Luka Modric. Specifician posao je opet se veže za Tottenham. Neće, ne, 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 neće niko odgovoriti. Ja ću, aha, you go up and down, please, please, you. Ne ako vrati, nego da dadi od profita kojeg će on zaradi. U nekom periodu ili cijelu karijeru? U cijelu karijeru. During the trial, Modric was called as a witness. Modric signed multiple contracts with Mamic during his Dinamo career. Upon moving to Tottenham, Modric guaranteed part of his transfer fee to Mamic, who had helped him financially in his early professional years. In 2017, Modric stated that he signed the annex in his contract, which pledged the fee to Mamic 10 years earlier. But in court, he said it was signed in 2004, when he got his first contract at Dinamo. Luka Modric was charged with perjury and was cleared in October of this year. But the episode severely hit Modric's reputation with certain sections of Croatian society, where Mamic is a deeply polarizing figure. I kad je on, znači, otišao 2004. godine, on je tražio od mene da raskinemo taj ugovor i ja sam na to pristao jer ovaj, sam ga jako volio. U tom transferu gdje je on otišao van je moj sin dosta zaradio. Ili mi kao obitelj, kako god hoćete. Prvi predsjednik, prvi predsjednik Hrvatske. First president Croatia. Mamic fled Croatia the night before his sentence was passed. He is currently situated over the border in Bosnia-Herzegovina, where he holds dual citizenship. During the perjury case, Modric and Mamic were prevented from having any contact with one another. Znači, Dinamo je od engleskog kluba dobio sve, ali su Dinamo i klub imali ne samo za Luku Modrića, nego za stotine igrača. Prije su imali dogovor o podijeli transfera. Neko je imao 50-50, neko 60-40, neko 40-60. Nije li tam praksa bila ukinuo najveće podoba? Ne, tu praksu sam ja ukinuo. Pa tu praksu sam upravo ja ukinuo. Ovo su bili nekoliko slučajeva gdje to nismo mogli napraviti. Jer klub tada nije mogao plaćati igrače kao što plaća danas. 500.000 eura, 700.000 eura ili Sudanija 2,5 miliona eura. Nego je Luka Modrić potpisao ugovor za 1.000 eura. Na 10 godina. Prema tome Luka je trebao igrati do 2014. godine u Dinamu za 1.000 eura po slovu ugovora. Ali je tada u Luka dogovorio da će mu Dinamo, s obzirom da mu ne plaća 
te velike plaće, da će mu dati dio transfera i dogovorili su se pola pola. A temeljem ugovora koji je Luka imao privatno sa mojim sinom, odnosno s njegovom agencijom, su Luka i agencija podijelili Lukin dio novca. It was the heaviest criticism Modric had ever faced in his homeland. As well as the graffiti popping up outside his former residence, Modric was confronted with calls for him to be stripped of the captaincy of the national team. Nije, 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 kažem, uopće nije ništa priča. Njega to kaže, nje, njegov pokazatelj, ja sam vam rekao, kad je, na primjer, ga napalo to, za to suđenje, on, njegov pokazatelj je to što je napravo reprezentaciju. Znači, to je njegov inat, to je njegov inat i garantiran da on sa tim svojim inatom napravo ovo što je napravo. Jer on da nije povoja takvoj ekipu, teško bi mi to osvojili. Kažem, to je njegov inat i to u njemu, to je u njemu, kad bio sam s njegovim tatom i kažem da mu nije bilo lako u tim trenucima kada ga napadalo i sa svih strana narod hrvatski, a dečko ništa nije kriv, tako da on je samo jedan veliki sportaš i jedan veliki gospodin. Slučajno ili ne slučajno moj sin. Prema tome niko od toga ne bježi, ali u toj priči smo mi napravili, napravili smo igrača i napravili korist Dinamu, hrvatskom nogometu, Modriću, pa u konačnici i mom sinu. Luka je najbolja osoba na svijetu. Najvažniji za svoj uspjeh. Svi drugi, uključujući mene, su tu marginalni. Netko je pomogao više ili manje. On je sve stvorio sam. On je igrao, on se odrica, on se borio, on je živio za nogomet. Pa iskreno, sad malo... Ja ću vam reći stvar, moj otac kad je bio tu, on je rekao da taj mali može biti Maradona. Sad je to malo čudno što ja to tako govorim, ono tako kad ga je gledao, on kaže ako nastavi raditi da taj mali stvar može napraviti vrhonsku karijeru. Mo uvijek smo igrali, igrali smo ispred hotel, hotel Kolovara, hotel, hotel Ižu, uvijek se nogome kaže, no uvijek, mi, znači, kod nas nije ni bilo ni mobitela, ni ništa, kod nas je samo bilo lopta, lopta, lopta. The Croatian War of Independence lasted from 1991 until 1995. It left thousands dead, and many more, including the Modriches, had to flee their homes as refugees. The Modriches settled in the coastal town of Zadar, where hotels were converted into refugee shelters. It was here that Luka first began to play football, in the car park, at school, and with the Zadar youth teams. In this very car park, uh, they tell us that this is the, the first area where, where Luka played with a, played with a football yeah, as well. This is where he learned it. That's how the story goes, because he only played football. That's, that's the only thing in, on, in his mind. Inače, ja živim, moja kuća je odmah do hotela Kolovara i ja sam njega često viđala sa prozora moje kuhinje, on je dole na travnjaku, lukolo, po cijelo popodne. I onda bi ja njemu rekla, ajde Luka, dosta više, ajde pisat domaći rad. A on bi rekao, evo još samo zera. I znate da idete u školu koju je išao tko? Luka Mladičić. Ja prva, dakle Luka je... Cijela ta njegova generacija krenuli su u školu 1992.-1993. godine i te tri školske prve godine su uglavnom sjećanja mračna ili ratna, ali u svemu tome i to veselje i ta djeca su te nekako održavala. To je uvijek monument za sve Dinamo Zagreb fans koji su uvijek u Kroatijskoj vrlo za independenciju. Mnogo od njih su uvijek. And the sign says that that war began on the May 13th, 1990, when the Dinamo Red Star game was that was never played, that was never finished with the big fan riots and. Uh, Which was the the Boban kick. That's right, the when, when Boban kicked, kicked the policeman. The war lasted from 1991 to 1995, uh, and this was the period when Croatian National League started, and our team started under this hybrid name. Hajanski, but no one in those days, no one, nobody thought about football, you know. To je dijete koje oni i njegovi prijatelji tadašnjima i par, mislim da ostao s njima i dalje dobar iz tog hotela. Oni su redovito dolazili u školu, dakle, bez obzira na to vrijeme, odrađivala se nastava, nekad je bilo sat, dva, tri, nekad su nas granate potirale doma, nekad bi škola bila zatvorena par dana, ali se Uglavnom radilo. Učilo se i radilo se sve što je, eto se ono doba 
trebalo naučiti čitanje, pisanje, vježbanje. Čak smo kad su stale malo granate, 93. 4. godine, bilo je redovito igranje vani. Mi smo baš imali često dvoranu, ali je vani igralište bilo slobodno. Eto, i to je vjerojatno bio prvi doticaj sa loptom. Jeste znali da, da išao u ovom školu prije? Meni je učiteljica rekla. Pokazala sliku i onda donijela na majice od potpisa i da sam tek sam sad saznala da je Luka išao u ovom školu. A sad si sad znao? Da. Si ga prepoznao na slici? Ne, iz prve ne. Onda poslije kad mi sljedeća pokazala na Andesu. Ali ono što je imao Luka to nikad u životu vidio nisam. To je zbilja nešto čudno, a pogotovo interesantno što tako jedan mali momak koji ne izgleda tako moćan, osjetiš svu njegovu moć kad ima loptu u nogama. Jer tad je on pravi. I e, ne mogu ga ni gurnuti, ni faulirati. On bi sve to preskočio, prošao. Čak je radio na betonu, klizeće startove, nikad nisam ja da se, da se ozlijede, da ima ikakvu ranicu. Sve je u... bio gumiran, da. Vrlo, vrlo gumiran. Despite his tiny frame, Luka was gaining notice. His form for the Zadar youth sections first brought attention from Hadjuk Split, but they opted against taking him on because there's reservations over his size. It left Luka heartbroken. However, a call from a local coach alerted Mamic and Dinamo to his talents. Luka je tada bio u, znači on je bio član moje agencije koju sam ja kad sam ja prešao u Dinamo je preuzeo moj sin, a ovaj a Luka je bio u Dinamo, igra s Dinamo. Prvo sam imao informacije da se radi o jednoj dosta teškoj obiteljskoj situaciji. To je u stvari bio jedan od glavnih razloga u Tomu Bašića zbog kojeg sam ja Luku prigrlio. Jer vidite dijete sa 14 godina, Luka je bio krhke građe i stvarno ne možete pretpostaviti da će biti uopće ozbiljan igrač, a kamo li ovo što je postigao. Živio je ovdje, tako je. Njih, njih četvorica su živjela ovdje ovaj, nekih godinu dana, nakon toga su otišli u stan. Dobar dan. Tako je, naravno, mi kad, ovaj, kad, kad nam je bilo dosadno ili možda iz nekog izlaska, kad nismo išli kući, onda smo svratili kod njih, prespavali kod njih, igrali igrice, sve što mladi radi. Bilo je blizu do treninga, onda... Je, da, i onda kako je blizu, naravno zakasnimo, jer nam je jako blizu. <laughs> Tako. A ova je recimo, neću reći ko. Kad je došao nije, nakon godinu dana, nakon godinu dana, da. Tih, znači godinu dana, šest mjeseci mu je trebalo da pokaže sve. Nakon toga je išao i u reprezentaciju. I nakon toga jednostavno uz taj karakter i talent nije, nije se moglo desiti da on odigra recimo dvije utakmice za redom loše. Jer jednostavno, ako krene loše utakmicu, njegov karakter ga je tjerao da, da, da ovaj, na kraju bude ovaj, jedan od boljih na toj istoj utakmici. Modric, Mamic says, had a development plan laid out for him at Dinamo. He needed games, so he was sent on loan to Zyurinski in the Bosnia and Herzegovina league. It was regarded in those days as one of the most physically demanding places for a footballer to make his living. Onda je otišao u Zrinski u jednu ligu, ja bih rekao kolokvijalno rečeno mesarsku ligu, gdje je svaki ovaj, duel između igrača ko prođe pričaće se, ovaj, ko preživi pričaće se. Modric aced it, earning the league's player of the year award. Imao je ovdje dosta grčeva, Jeste, jer je davao 200% na utakmici i svaka utakmica pred kraj je bilo upitnik zbog njegovih grča. Niko nije cijeli stade nije htio da on izađe, on jednom padne, pa se ustane, pa nas drugi put padne i onda je morao izaći. Znali su ga iznositi od grčeva. Jer je za nas kao djecu tada bila to jaka liga. So this is like the, the graffiti about Luka Modric in, in Mostar. Uh, this was made like six, seven years ago. So not while he was playing in, in Zrinski, but not now when he is the best player of the world. So that, that just shows how fans in Mostar adore him. He played here for one season. He was voted best player 
of the league, despite the fact that Zrinski was like bottom of the table, middle bottom. When Zrinski played played as a visiting team, the home fans would like, of course, support their team, but also applaud Luka Modric, whether he was substituted or just made some great moves, some dribble, something really fans here could recognize, wow, this is not a player who should play in Bosnia League. After Zrinski, Modric would be loaned again. There was no space at Dinamo owing to the presence of Niko Krancar, and so he was given to Inter Zaprasic, a team on the outskirts of Zagreb. They were flying in the first half of the season and in contention for the title, but Dinamo recalled Modric. They now had the space in their team because Krancar was controversially sold to Hajduk. To vreme su bili dresovi oni veliki, široki i tak dalje. Ko njega je stalno sve lepršalo, jednostavno small za njega je bilo XL. Kad su odlazili oni čale iz, iz Intera natrag u zimskom prilaznom roku, nisam im platio zadnju plaću od 5000 kuna i tako da sam im ostal dužan. Znači, I dan danas. povijesna je činjenica da još uvijek, ne znam koliko je sa to sa kamatama, ali mi smo ostali dužni Luki Modriću 5000 kuna. Modric would firmly establish himself in the Dinamo lineup over the next three seasons, earning three league titles and two doubles, becoming Croatia's outstanding young talent with all of Europe's big clubs competing for his signature. This is his first title in Croatia, this one, 2006. And he, we can say he launched the winning streak after he won uh, the championship in 2006. Uh, our team won 11 consecutive titles. So he participated in the first three. Mm -hmm. I won three, it was it two doubles and three Two doubles, times. two doubles, but not in 2006. His second and third championship title were, were the double. Kako zamišljate vaš, vaš prvi, kako biste voljeli da izgleda vaš prvi susret kad završi cijeli ovaj spor? Sigurno će to biti susret ovaj, bar sa moje strane mo, o, o, oca i sina. Znači, ja sam se odrekao ovdje svih ovaj, potraživanja u odnosu na njega u, u, za vreme čitave njegove karijere i još je on otkazao mom sinu za stupanje. Ali ga ljubim svim bićem. Luka Modric was Croatia's heartbeat at the World Cup. He was given FIFA's golden ball as the outstanding player in the tournament, and in the autumn also earned FIFA and UEFA's individual honours for 2018. To his trophy collection, he added yet another Champions League title, his fourth in five seasons since joining Real Madrid. Not bad for a boy from such humble origins. So in this beautiful Velabit land, landscape Luka Modric grew up. So this is, because I've read before that he grew up in his grandfather's house, but this is actually the family house. It's this, not this was the family house, right? Yeah. There's no place to play football here. I mean, we are probably 800 to 1,000 meters high, maybe even more. And you can imagine the road was not like this 20 years ago. No, the road was probably like that 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, more, more of that. And if a ball starts rolling, it you know, ends it up somewhere in the sea. <laughs> it's it rolls <laughs> to the lake or to the sea down there. The, the house stands abandoned. I mean, it's not what we'd expect to see from, you know, a childhood home and for somebody who's so revered in a country. Wh why does it look like this? Because no one has really touched it for 20 years, and more than 20 years. And they left the house. They had to leave the house quickly. Yeah, they had to leave the house. His grandfather was killed just outside the house. Uh, by Serbian military troops or whoever, and uh, and they had to leave. During the war, this was this was occupied land. Yeah, this was occupied territory. Yeah, yeah. Zadar, Zadar was defended, but this was occupied. Well, I just want to walk around to the to the side of the house here, um, because just at the back of the the Modric family property, we see um, a sign no written up there. A sign up there written in Croatian, and the big writing says "No trespass." But yeah. tell us, what else does it say on that sign? Well, it says no trespass with because there's a high danger of of mine landmines, and and that's common. We've seen some of those signs on the on the drive up yeah, there as well. Yeah, yeah, because since this was the occupied territory, so the enemies left left the landmines buried somewhere, and it's not safe to to walk here. There's one tiny little clue that this is the uh, the home of the childhood home of Madrid. And that's the, and it's the, the something something that fans did. The Croatia flag, which I yeah. presume is put up in the summer during the World Cup, maybe. Uh, yeah, the big, the biggest one is "Hail Captain Luca," and this one says "Cheers Luca." This one says "Thank you Luca, our captain." It's a mark. 
that it's a special house. I think it deserves more of a mark, but that's uh, what, what's here so far. Yeah. It, al it almost feels religious here. You know, it feels like we're in um, like a shrine, a relic. It's, uh, it's uh, a strange place to be. Fe feels special. If Luca did not become a professional footballer, what, what kind of opportunities were here for, for children born sort of in the mid-1980s, who, who would be my age now, let's say? Ah, there, before the war, there were factories. There were, there were, there were something to do if you did not de deal with the raising animals or agriculture business. That type of industry in agriculture doesn't exist in these yeah, areas anymore. Not, not much, not much really, because the younger generations just uh, abandoned villages like this, moved to the cities. Uh, the ones from smaller cities moved to bigger cities, and places like this are left to to ruin. To remind of someone big who was born here.